for the game that we are developing in our third year of university studying computer game arts. I thought you were going to come in then like computer. <laughs> no, nope. nope, left you hanging. <laughs> so if you didn't know already, this is Tabitha and she um, is the character artist. And I am the game designer for this game that we are creating throughout our final year. Blah. <laughs> I guess the thought is that I want to share with you the process of the game from start to finish. So we're just going to be updating you every now and then, talking about the game, talking about our processes, what we do to create it, all the way from the concepting to the modeling to the rigging and animation and to the coding and there's more probably. <laughs> there's a lot that's involved in game making. And don't forget we are students, so um, it might not be the way that big companies do it, but it's the way that we're being taught right now. So hopefully it might intrigue or, you know, help you in some way if you want to get into game development. But enough jibber jabber. Good job jibber jabber. Good job jibber jabber. <laughs> Our game is called Perfection. Yes. I think. It might change. Yeah, it might change. <laughs> we decided at the very beginning that we wanted to make a horror game because the horror genre is something that we're all very mm -hmm. passionate about and there's no point making something that You're you don't inter enjoy. In. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I guess me being the game designer, I come up with the concepts and the storyline and everything else. Um, so that is my job role, as well as being um, project manager, so trying to manage the team. I try to do my <laughs> best to like make a schedule, use Trello. Trello is great for putting your tasks down, using Google Calendar for deadlines, and putting in meetings and things like that. And also I do the code in C Sharp using the Unity 3D engine. I am the character artist, and for this game I am making three characters, but the main one being the monster, and then a male and a female character, which will be in a first person view, so they won't have heads. <laughs> so our monster is an embodiment of human imperfection, so it's a combination of everything that people don't like about themselves. Um, it's covered in scars, stitches, bruises, it's got a mucked up face <laughs> and you shouldn't be able to tell what gender and you, it is. yeah you shouldn't be able to tell what gender so it should it be is. relatable yeah yeah to the audience yeah and that that is a theme that we wanted to run through this game of perfection because um so when i realized we all wanted to do horror i had to look into what what makes a good horror game how to scare an audience one of the main things that i found were you know, you can make a game about something scary like clowns or ghosts. However, that's very specific to certain people's fears. I mean, not everyone is scared of those things. Not everyone mm -hmm. believes in ghosts. Not everyone sees clowns as scary things. And then there's the unknown, and people are kind of scared of the unknown. So that kind of it taps into more people. However, I think everyone is scared of themselves in some way or another. We all have things that we feel um, not very confident about and we all worry about how we're perceived by other people. Um, so that's something that I thought I could play on and I could hit pretty much everyone that played our game. So that's why the whole concept is around wanting to be perfect. Um, but then after they try this new perfection <laughs> mechanic, the whole world goes a bit loopy. They see their imperfection visualized in front of them, which would be Tab's character. Yeah. Um, and yeah, everything just goes a bit, a bit crazy. At the beginning of the game, before they decide to use this perfection mechanic, um, it's actually quite a nice scene. They're lulled into a false sense of security by being around quite modern looking furniture and environments that seem quite homely, but then everything changes once they use the mechanic. It's taken inspiration from games like Bioshock, where it's it's all about kind of a futuristic mechanic, future, futuristic, 
What would it be called? Futuristic. Ad- oh. oh, it's using like futuristic yeah. <laughs> advancements. Yeah. yeah, to advance humankind, but at the same time, it's kept that old style. I quite enjoyed that. So I've been trying to make concept art of what the perfection poster would be to, for you to go and use this new mechanic, just like in Bioshock. But then you realise once you use it not actually as as great because there is no quick fix to becoming this perfect human being and that's that's uh what we want to play on in this game so anyway the steps that we've taken to get to where we are now is that i had to really flesh out this idea and this narrative because i had it in in my head but i needed to get it through in a demo game because that's all we have time to make within this third year of university so for that i had to do a storyboard um, I mean, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, just something, no. your sketches, just something to visualise and be able to show people this This is exactly what's going to happen in the game. And along with that, I wrote a script, and in the script showed uh, the environments, what objects were uh, you were able to interact with, if there were any animations in that scene, what the animations were. So that also helped Tabitha mm-hmm. realise how long it might take her to do some of the animations, and the environment artist as well knew... Uh, which parts of the environment would be interacted with, so which which parts had to look a bit more polished. Well, I feel like I've told you <laughs> so much now. As well as that, obviously, I just got a bunch of mood boards and concepts of how I envisioned the world looking to fit with the narrative, and then using that, you guys were able to make the real, the real art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Develop it into something yeah. more realistic. Yeah. So what have you been using to develop the characters? So I've been using like other games to like reference to and the main one being um, Alice the Manus Returns because their art style is quite realistic but ag- exaggerated in a way and it's all very realistic textures and stuff and I think that's something we should try and incorporate in our game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just looking at other games, like I've looked at Bioshock as well. Yeah. And like the kind, of, it's kind of postmodernist. Yes. Like. Yeah. And I think that's what we're going for in our game as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. And how have you gotten on with the? Because we use Maya for the modeling. Yeah. So how? I don't know. Is there anything you want to talk about with that? I mean, at the moment, it's just basic models that we've got for the characters because. Obviously, to add all the detail, and it's going to take quite a while. Yeah. Are so you starting with low poly or high yeah, poly? Yeah, so we're doing low poly character, and then I'll later put it into um, Z Rush. But I have been doing a lot of chopping and changing between the two programs. Would you make the basic shape in Z Rush first yes, or in yeah. Maya? So in Z Rush first, because you can use different tools. So, like Z Spheres, for example, helps like outline a body, basic body, and then you can export that out into Maya and then um, expand on it to make it more look humanoid like. <laughs> more look humanoid like. <laughs> humanoid like. <laughs> yeah. But then you can, yeah, you can then determine that it looks like a, a human because in ZBrush it's just a bunch of rubbish. <laughs> and then we've been working together, obviously, in the same room. So I'll be putting everything as these guys are making it. So there's Tabitha making the characters. And um, we have three characters, by the way, because... Oh, yeah. Were you going to explain that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What makes this game stand out? Well, one of the main aspects of this game is Facebook integration. And I know that happens in a lot of games. But one thing that I realised hasn't really been tapped into at all to my knowledge is using Facebook integration to personalize a gaming experience so to actually make them feel more immersed instead of just using it to share their score and stuff like that and have a leaderboard so what we're doing is uh, we're, we're asking the player to give permission Facebook permission and then we're getting things like their their profile picture and their friends list and other kind of details about them that we can find out through their Facebook profile and then we're putting that into the game so hopefully it will make them feel a bit more connected it will make the game and the aspects within it feel more personal to them and therefore they'll feel a bit more scared 
it was a bit weird to get my head around it because I'm I'm the coder, so I have to look at the Facebook SDK for Unity and things like that. But actually, there is so much documentation online; it hasn't been too difficult to get my head around it. Um, I think now I'm just kind of understanding how I'm going to beta test it using servers. But it looks like you can like Facebook has its own one that you can upload it to which is great and while these guys are working on the models and the grey boxes and everything I'm able to put it into Unity one by one, start the coding, start the interactions, make sure that things are working before we make it look pretty because if it doesn't work mechanic wise there's no point in wasting days and days just making the textures look great or the particle systems work because yeah. you know the, the core functionality has to be there so that's what we're we're focusing on right now because we're we're slowly coming up to alpha deadline um, but that's fine to be a gray box and a gray box is literally just the basic model forms of the characters and the environment with no textures no lighting well basically you need to see yeah. <laughs> but yeah no crazy lighting no, no particles. detail just just the basics just the basics and the functionality. <laughs> We've actually done a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, I thought maybe we should do this more often because like, we're reflecting <laughs> yeah, we're on what we we've realize. done. We won't, we won't. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, also we've been looking into animation. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so because Tabitha is modeling the characters, we also need them to animate. Um, she's modeling a male and a female primarily because when it looks at your Facebook profile it sees whether you're a male or a female and we want you to feel immersed in the game so we will change the first person body depending on what gender you are um, but we needed it to be walking so and yeah men and females walk differently don't oh they? yeah they do oh yeah we can so. make the girls strut <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, we spent a full day looking at animations using Maximo, which is a great website. Do you want to talk about Maximo? So yeah, it's it's Adobe, I think, yeah. Um, a website basically you can go on and upload a 3D model and it rig auto-rigs it for you, so it gives it a skeleton to move. And then it has a bunch of animations or poses that you can select from and then incorporate it in a game. Or a video it saves so much time yeah. because rigging in Maya they have an auto rig uh, function but yeah, it's not very reliable yeah it's not unless you're doing your basic T pose and it's mm -hmm. a very generic character yeah. it's it's quite difficult so yeah Maximo is a lifesaver and then basically you put it into unity and you kind of do it as a flow chart um, yeah. and it's all like boolean so if uh, the speed is over this velocity, then that means that she is walking. So play the walking animation. Um, so yeah, that's that's all working now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, let us know what you think about these little catch-ups of the game. We just think it's good to keep you involved, let you know what's happening. I will be eventually making kind of trailers and more <laughs> videos about the game on over on my main channel, Yagman X. However, this is just for you to kind of see a bit more behind the scenes. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> also, I'll leave Tabs's. What do you want? Your Twitter, your Instagram. My Instagram is probably the best. Okay. One, yeah. I'll leave Tabs's Instagram details down below. So say <laughs> hi and let her know if you came from here. That'd be that would be awesome. And yeah, we'll update you when we next have time. <laughs> Three, two, one. Have, have a lovely, lovely day, day or evening. evening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>